Vamos lá, pessoal. Thank you. Bom, vamos partilhar a tela aqui. Hello, everyone. Let me share the screen. So, everything okay? Sí, Tiago, se ve bien. Yes. Thank you. I'm going to make my presentation in Portuguese. I think that those of you who might find it difficult to follow me can use the interpretation into Spanish and into English. I will be speaking about 400 giga ZR, the holy grail of optical communication. I will be sharing a couple of concepts with you on this technology and with uh, the advantages it has in terms of changes for those who do optical network operations or those who do transmission and data transmission over long distances and over short distances. Now the concept of the holy grail is like a joke because this is because of the benefits we have with 400 ZR. And this is something that we as network operators always have to find. We're always searching for this. So it's like the story of, of the Holy Grail. We always seek to achieve something and technology today allows us to reach a point in which we can say that we are at the state of the art. This complies with all the requirements and we can even find all the, the meet all the challenges of the network operators with this technology now to go into the details of 400 zr let me tell you about the 400 giga speed this is a transition to new speeds to new capacities this is the table of march 2019 which shows the adoption year after year of a great capacity. We managed to see the interface of 100 gigs, gigas in blue, and this shows the enormous adoption. But 400 gigs start to become relevant as from 2021. We see that there has been an increase and this increases then beyond over to 22 and this will be stronger over the coming years. The older interfaces of 10 gigas still have quite a long life ahead and the 40 gigas will tend to disappear in 2022 according to the statistics of the groups. The light counting will stop existing as from 2023. So we understand that we are now adopting these standards based on 10, then 100, 200, 400, and maybe in the future 800. We speak about 400 gigas. We're adopting this speed both for the short reach speeds, for the data centers, and also for the long distance ones. The main attribute, the main information of the presentation will focus on the long distance 400 gigas. The next slide shows the physical format. These are the standards and the options for the physical format. The 1518 is not so much use. It is very big. It occupies a big density. The density of the devices then decreases and occupies a lot, a lot sport density. So the most common standard is between the QSFP and the QS ATD and 28. There's like a kind of war between these two. QSFP DD and QSFP 28, which will prevail? Well, these are organizations that support different types of standards and try to pull in the direction of one or the other. Now, this should be solved shortly, and we see that the adoption of the QS 
FBDD has been greater. Now, this is no determining rule, but there is a greater adoption of a QSFBDD. So this is where we face the challenge. The physical challenge of these models is precisely to include all the technology in a module like this with a limited heat dissipation. In the QSP28, you can put a transmission link or a chip with 24 watt capacity. In the QSFBDD, we use working between 15 and 18 watts. So the components should be more advanced in order to be able to work. As mode of reference, QSFP28 is very well known to all. It has a limitation of five watts and allows you to include all the technology of 400 gigas in it. We probably won't see a 100 giga CR in the FP28 in the short period of time. So this has to do with the limited dissipation capacity of these modules. The QSFPDD, making a simple comparison, is an evolution of the QSFP28 with a similar physical part that DD means double density. So we're duplicating the communication capacity between the electrical interface and the switch in the optical mode. And this ends up expanding these to much larger ones. You can see on the screen that one is a bit larger and it sort of uh, goes out a bit from the device. So I read, you might say that I already have one that supports QSP DD and I can use it and this already exists in the market, they are available, and we are going through a difficult stage due to the lack of chips that there are in the market. There's a difficulty in that regard, but you already have devices available. Interfaces que já suportam aí o 400 gigas, né? Modules or interfaces that support 400 giga, the standard that I mentioned before in the DD. But there's also SPP. When speaking about the specifications of the 400G, this standard shows, I mean, different entities work with this standard, and 3G is the most common internet standard. And we will speak about long distance modules, the ones that you can see at the bottom of your screen. 400, ZR, or plus, that were standardized by the OIF. It is an operator consortium that standardize the 400 ZR different. These are different from the others that we can see on screen as well, like the 400, for example. I3E also has a new standard trying to extract 400 ZR doesn't have a G for giga. That is the name of this standard. So the standard from I3E will be this one. It's still in the works. Speaking about technology, the 400 giga technology, that it is necessary for that long reach. We have high tech modules. And the main difference is that we have a DWDM technology where I can multiplex several. It's not just one. We have 40, 80, 90, 96 channels, 64 
channels with 400 G, that would be the limit for 400 G. So there's a lot of capacity for the module to have 400 G technology. We need to add in a small module all the technology of the GWM transponder of 400 giga. One is the coherent consistent detection. We don't use direct detection. And the common 400 giga, we are now using different modules, detections. So we are no longer using traditional on off detection. And we are now using a more consistent or coherent DWGM detection. We have dealt different polarizations and, and when it comes to 400, we use 16. So if I can load four bits per symbol per polarization, so a 50G bound module will give me four bits per symbol to pull in a single channel with that gigahertz space. And this technology is framed within the module. And then we have a forward error correction technology. This is an error correction algorithm that we will have to use to correct transmission errors when the signals exceed 40, 60, or 80 kilometer long distances. So we will find ourselves in the need for this mathematical algorithm for error correction, which is embedded in the chip in that module. It is an additional technology that uses power and will have to be available for us to transport our uh, 16 kilometer modulation over a long distance. So the error correction is that you are going to transmit in inverse bits, it should arrive at zero, but it does as one. But unless you have this error correction, you are going to mistransfer those bits. There is an error. But if we use forward error correction, we are going to be able to correct those bits. And zero will be zero one and will depend on the parity to identify and integrate the corrected signal. So in a 400 giga interface, we will have a payload of 400 giga, but the header is a, a little bit larger. We could transport 500 gigabits per second because the rest of the header is used for the mathematical forward error correction operation. So we have to go into the module, which is very small if we compare it to a traditional transponder. We already have 400 giga transponders. So we have the chassis, for example, or the DCI, or even the CFP2, where we can deal with 400 giga. And the technology uh, challenge here, and that's why we speak about the holy grail, is how do we put all of this technology that we have available in a huge transponder that will take up half a rack, how do we manage to put this all in a small module without losing density? So. In here, I have to manage to put all of this technology together. You can see a picture on screen. You're going to have a transmission laser and a DCP. It's a chip for digital signal processing. That's a DCP to have a chromatic dispersion compensation, the forward error correction calculation to work with our router. The DCP is the big challenge that we have ahead. And to really have the physical space to do it and low energy consumption to use these in a 15 watt capacity module. So getting here, we were able to get here was thanks to the, uh, the chip lithography evolution. 
and here we have a picture of its evolution. So we started with optical components, this DC, PU, silica. You are able to use many transistors for a small space and a smaller space and really lower energy consumption. At the end of 2019, 2020, we started to see the seven nanometer technology, a very, very small chip, high power chip, where we managed to put a really tiny silica for all of the technology that we need for a 400 ZR the modulation, error correction, and everything I mentioned before, the entire spectrum. And this was all necessary to integrate it and come up with this ZR module without a reduced computing capacity, considering that we have a reduced space. We are now seeing new chips that I think Samsung has launched some at the time did not they did not develop that they did not produce these chips but now they do one we're going to have three or two nanometers probably in the future we are now well, we were speaking about the ZR technology, and as I said before, this is a standard defined by the OIF to use 400 giga in long distances. Transportation in going from the inside the data center interface, go across the city, go across a metropolitan region of about 40 to 80 kilometers. So we are sort of abandoning the more traditional model with a switch and a router, a transponder, and that transponder in turn had also a role in the optical network. So we are now using a 400 CR module directly integrated to the switch or router, and there's no longer a need for a third device. The 400 CR is directly connected with the dark fiber, and we have a larger reach capacity. We're speaking about 80 to 120 kilometer, but of course, this will depend on the fiber. Some are better quality than others, and we might have a larger, a larger reach. So without an amplifier, we're speaking about 40 kilometers in the default method, with the technology that we showed you, FEC, the error correction, the type of frames used, and the 400 ZR standards already been adopted by Microsoft, Google. It's gone through the testing and study stages, and it's already been published. Some examples for use. We have a direct channel 40 uh, at about 40 or 50 kilometers tops depending depend, dependent if there it's amplified or not or we could also use a DWDM network with an amplifier and in that case we could reach 80 to 120 kilometers so if we leave the standard options Behind, we can look at the other options that we have in the market. Some call them 400 CR plus and others. And we are going to look at other characteristics different from a traditional transponder. This slide shows exactly that. That scope, the 400 CR, which is standardized, it's open. 
what is important and it's important that it is open so several manufacturers can build those 400 cr module and they are interoperable between the different manufacturers if the manufacturer follows the 400 cr standard they will have to comply with those characteristics now some manufacturers are launching proprietary solutions like 400 CR plus with a lower modulation, maybe 300 giga with a longer distance reach. So we have some modules that are prepared for 2000 or 3000 kilometers and underwater. So of course, as you can see, technology already allows us to do this. We're going to use some more robust FEC or now there's an open fact that it is larger than 400 cr and we have the otn frame with a large capacity of potency so 400 cr plus is more broad it's broader so if you're going to look for information or 400 cr you will follow and you will have to follow that standard and 400 cr plus well i would say that the manufacturer has more freedom that chart shows a comparison of how 400 cr plus works and what we can do with them we could have a reach of for example 7,000 kilometers if we are speaking about a, an, an underwater and the other ones that we can follow as i said i3e is also developing their own standard it's 400 cr and there are different working groups on this topic with different objectives and it is being developed by i3e some of the benefits as i said before the main benefit is density we have the same type of boards in the same equipment with 32 the same density the same number of boards with a longer distance or short distance signal so that is the main advantage that we have Finally, Finally, we have the topology here with the difference in the model. We work with a different in mode, grade connected to the DCI, to the rest of the system. So going over to the fiber and so on, then having a simpler solution with the same capacity. I sped up at the end so that I could respect the time. So we now have time for questions. I'd like to thank you for your attention. And those of you who will can see it afterwards, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me, whether now or also later, you can find me, reach me through email or Twitter. So, I'm at your disposal. I'm looking for engineers to work with us using these types of technologies. Thank you, everyone. And I'm at your disposal for any questions. Thank you, Tiago, for your presentation. We now will have a couple of questions so that you can ask questions through the Q&A panel. And for those who are joining us for the first time, let me remind you that you can find the q a box at the bottom of the platform so you can write your questions in that section any query questions you might have regarding this presentation please take this opportunity so that tiago can answer the questions directly so they um, they tell me there's a question in the panel Yes, there is a question from Familia Raimundo. The question is, what device would you recommend that has the capacity to transmit 400G, but can also manage BGP? Yes. Thank you, Raimundo. Normally, 
these uh, devices which are routers that do that action you will be able to find in the market switches for 400 g ports but in general these switches are limited in terms of the protocol or the capacity the route capacity so to have a vgp port with 400 giga routers you have to use those are the main vendors cisco juniper and so on so all vendors are having difficulties to manufacture because of the chip problem but the devices have already ex uh, already ex existed for some time now there is a question from Guillermo who would like to know if we can specify what optical connectors can be used with these modules. So this can also be used for the gray interfaces. And Armando Carmona would like to know what is your perception of time in what period of time do you expect that these 400 giga solutions will reach the LATAM region for service providers? Well, this won't take too long. We work with other companies of major networks and this will not take too long. Even the 400 CR will be available since 2022. Maybe in the first quarter of 2022, we'll have networks that will be using these 400 giga networks the 400 g r 400 g c r can already be in production in the first quarter of 2022 but this will happen gradually we will start to see better speeds as from 2022 maybe in the second quarter so, to what extent can you de-channel the 400 gigas? Well, normally this is close. It's 400 gigas, complete 400 gigas. So this is linked to a switch, to a router, and there you get the 400 giga package, and there you can divide it. So the 400 is a closed channel they are not subdivided then thank you Tiago. we have no more questions in the q and a box so thank you for this excellent presentation